Hai pelajar-pelajar, welcome to iTutors. Saya Cikgu KR, Guru Sains Anda. And today, I'm going to start by teaching you all the first chapter in Form 5 which is microorganism and their effects on living things. So, mari kita lihat ya. So, apabila kita melihat buku teks, there are 8 subtopics in your syllabus. And I've broken this down into four important modules. Module 1 will cover 1.1 and 1.2. Module number 2 will be covering 1.3 and 1.4. Module 3 will be covering 1.5 until 1.7. And once all has been completed, we will try to answer some past year questions so you can understand better and prepare yourself for SPM 2020. Mari kita lihat ya. Let us start with the first lesson which is classification of microorganism. Let us start now. The first common question which your school exam will ask you is what is microorganisms? Now, microorganism came from two words. Okay, microorganisma datang daripada dua perkataan. The first one which is micro and the second one is known as organisms. So what are these? In science, micro is defined as tiny and in Bahasa Melayu, we call it as seni atau dikenali sebagai sangat kecil. And organisms are defined as living things. Dalam Bahasa Melayu, we call it as benda hidup. So, if you combine these words, what is microorganisms? Microorganisms are tiny organisms. Microorganisma adalah organisma seni. Now, the question is going to ask you, why? Kenapa mereka kata it is tiny? Why do we say mereka adalah seni? Because it cannot be seen with the naked eye, but it can be seen under the microscope. Dia tidak dapat dilihat dengan menggunakan mata kasar, tetapi boleh dilihat dengan menggunakan microscope. So, this is the first basic thing you need to understand in microorganism. Let's go to the second point. Now, according to the second point, it says that, okay, microorganisms are classified based on five important categories, okay? Microorganisma dikelaskan berdasarkan lima ciri yang sangat penting. And what are those? The first one is shape, bentuk. Yang kedua is size. Yang ketiga is cara pembiakan dan reproduction. Number four is nutrition. And number five is habitat. So, based on these five classification this is how they identify which microorganisms is in which category. Let us continue. Point number three. Now, what is point number three saying? Point number three is simply telling you that there are two types of microorganisms. Now, if you can see, one is with the angel and one is with the devil. Now, what does it mean? It means that microorganisma are the dual genus. One, it gives you kebaikan, advantages. And the second one, it gives you keburukan, which is disadvantages. Now, why, sir? A lot of students will ask me, sir, why are they good? Why are they bad? Some microorganisms, ada setengah microorganisma, which are useful to us. For example, when you drink vitagen, vitagen contains a few good bacteria to clear up your stomach. But there are also some microorganisms that can cause disease. Alright? Boleh menyebabkan penyakit yang sangat kronik sehingga boleh menyebabkan maut. So, these are the two type of microorganisms. Alright? We'll study that later on in your second module, which is 1.3 and 1.4. Let us continue. Alright? Now, according to your syllabus, there are five types of microorganisms. Now, this is not in your module, so you please write this down. The formula is simple. Babun pergi Filipina angkat van. Now, make sure you don't answer this in your exam. This is how you memorize for your science. Alright, now what is Babun Pegi Filipina angkat van? First, the first alphabet here is B. B stands for bacteria. The second one is P. P stands for protozoa. The third one is F. F is fungi. Bahasa Melayu is kulat. The fourth one is A. A is alga. And the last one, V V is virus. So, these are the five microorganisms in your syllabus and you need to study all of them. Now, let's go through one by one starting from bacteria. Alright, so the first thing what we're going to study is we're going to look at bacteria. Now, bacteria, the first most important thing is you have to memorize. Anda harus menghafal gambar rajani. Alright, now not only you need to memorize how the picture looks like, you must remember what are the names of the parts in the Cell. All right, mari kita labelkan ya. Starting from the first one, the one on top on the left hand side is called the cell wall, dinding cell. Yang kedua is the nucleus. Yang ketiga is known as the cytoplasma or cytoplasm. The fourth one is the cell membrane atau membrane cell. 
followed by the flagellum and the last one is the plasma membrane atau dikenali sebagai membran plasma now these are the name of the parts of bacteria you have to memorize so this is the first part now let's go into the second part where they ask you the characteristics of bacteria starting with the shape now bacteria are the only microorganisms that have four shape and you must memorize the name so how you memorize them remember the formula of Chiom Babun Sampai Vietnam sir what is this let me explain C stands for cocus B is called bacillus S is spirillium and the last one B is vibrio sir how do we identify this very simple let me explain to you all if the shape is cocus the shape is in a circular motion dia berbentuk bulat all right bacillus if you can see it is more to a rod shape something like this spirillium you just memorize it is like a spring shape and the last one vibrio its shape is like a comma okay it's like a comma shape so these are the four shapes you have to memorize in your bacteria so what we have studied the structure and the picture of the bacteria the second one yang soalan akan tanya dalam exam is the size of bacteria so you memorize the size of bacteria is from 0.2 right up to 2 micrometer once you're done with the size next let's look at the habitat so basically the habitat to bacteria bacteria lives everywhere okay bacteria tinggal di semua tempat so if you can see that i've written down air food water soil living and also dead organisms dalam bahasa melayu udara makanan air tanah benda hidup ataupun benda mati all right followed by the next one which is nutrisi now nutrisi you remember the formula of pas now what is pas all right pas is three important ways of how microorganism get their nutrients now let us see okay first is p p is parasitic okay dalam bahasa melayu is parasite okay now biasanya this parasitic microorganism mereka akan mendapatkan makanan daripada perumahnya they always get from the host now a lot of ask me sir what is host host is defined as the living organism benda hidup which means in your body there is something called cacing pita which is eating the intestine the sisa-sisa dalam usus kecil, all right, in a very small portion. That cacing pita is known as parasitic because you are still alive and inside your body has a microorganism. So that's the first one. Number two is A. A stands for autotrophic. Sir, what is autotrophic? Autotroph is the ability of every microorganism untuk menghasilkan makanannya sendiri to produce their own food example photosynthesis these are examples of autotroph and the third one is saprophyte now saprophyte basically they will eat something which is already dead or decaying okay benda yang sudah mati ataupun reput so these are the three types of ways how microorganism obtain their nutrients next after settle the nutrient the last one they'll ask you is how does it reproduce now this is how it reproduce all bacteria they reproduce asexually which means it's either done by binary fission or by producing spores mereka akan menjalankan proses belahan the dua ataupun penghasilan spora and we are done with bacteria now we have completed bacteria let's go into the second one which is protozoa now for protozoa there are three pictures i've put in my notes the first one on your left hand side dikenali sebagai ameba the second one the middle one is known as paramecium and the third one on the right is known as the euglena okay so these are the three most important names you have to memorize okay for your exam all right now let us look at the characteristics of protozoa starting from the shape now the shape of the protozoa is not fixed tidak tetap followed by the size the size of the bacteria is from 5 to 250 millimeters which mean it is the largest microorganism on planet dia merupakan microorganisma yang terbesar all right so that's done with the size next let's look at the habitat where does protozoa live protozoa usually lives in the water mereka hidup dalam air followed by the nutrition they will get their food from heterotrophic and also parasitic and the last one how do they reproduce macam mana cara mereka membiak mereka membiak menggunakan pembiakan asex atau dikenali sebagai asexual reproduction and we are done with protozoa now let's go into the third most important one which is fungi fungi there are two pictures you have to memorize and these are the two pictures 
the one on the left is known as the yeast and the one on the right is known as the muco all right are we done moving on to the characteristics first let's look at the shapes now the shapes of fungi you have two types first is unicell and the second one is multicell ada dua jenis yang pelajar-pelajar yang pertama ialah unicell dan yang kedua ialah multicell mari kita lihat apa beza dia all right for unicell it is always for yeast and multicell it is always for muco so these are the two shapes you have to memorize followed by the size of the fungi the fungi size is one right up to 100 micrometer followed by the habitat now fungi they will live in two very important places number one you need to make sure that their house is always dark gelap and number two it must be moisty and lembab remember this fungi their living place is dark and moisty gelap dan juga lembab now how do they get their food from dua cara one is saprophyt and one more is parasite and after we have known the nutrition the next one is the cara pembiakan now how does fungi membiak fungi membiak dengan menggunakan pembiakan asex okay through asexual reproduction and there are two ways number one is the producing of spores and number two is by shoot yang pertama ialah penghasilan spora dan yang kedua ialah dengan menggunakan batang all right next let's go into the fourth one which is alga now for alga there are four pictures you have to memorize starting with the top most left is called the spirogyra followed by the bottom one which is called phytoplankton the third one is called pneumococcus and the last one is called chlamydomonas so these are the four names you have to memorize all right moving on to the characteristics starting with the shape now the shape of, of alga okay is of course not fixed because you saw the picture earlier the pictures are not the same all right number two the size of alga is from 10 right up to 10,000 micrometers okay now the third one is the most important thing is the habitat all right now the habitat for alga they live they must have three characteristics mereka harus memenuhi tiga syarat ni they must live in a moisty place a place which has water and it must be bright remember this ah huh? kawasan lembab berair but the most important thing here is bright cerah sir why bright kenapa kena hidup di kawasan yang cerah because that is how they obtain their food algas need bright place because they need to take light to do the process called photosynthesis only alga does photosynthesis in the microorganism family all right and the last one how do they reproduce again through asexual which is belahan the dua atau dikenali sebagai binary fission all right students so